So it's 10.42 and we're going to start um, the lecture on color composition, uh, specifically transparency and opacity. Everybody can hear me, right? And can see me clearly? All right. And then I'm going to share um, screen. So wait a minute. Share. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, Paul. Okay. So before we start, we're going to um, do a little bit of refresher. What can you remember about your color theory? Anyone? Guys? Julian. What's that? Uh, how about Ariel? Uh, for me, it's about brightness of colors, and it actually mm -hmm. makes emphasis of the objects and the background of itself as, as we all create art. Okay. What else? I forgot. Uh, it's also the shadows. Pa pala. Okay, thank you. How about someone else? What can you remember about your color theory? Paul. Mom, yung mga color schemes, yung mga, kung yung magagandang colors na pag pinagsama, tas, yun po. Okay. Thank you. That's right. Um, color, I, Julian said, what did he say? <laughs> um, where is the color suggest? He said complementary colors. Yes, that's also correct. So let us just um, scheme through what uh what you remember about your color theory or rather this is just uh, a refresher so you have your hue the hue is the colors in your spectrum so you are usually have circular order uh like as is illustrated here in the color wheel and then color wheel is what you use it is a display a device to help explain the relationship between primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So if you remember your light, you have this white light, right? And when you put it on um, a prism, it would be, um, when it goes through the prism, it would be divided into different kinds of light, and that is your rainbow, right? So the primary color usually are red, yellow, and blue. And then from there, nagmix sila. So that there you have the orange, green, purple. And then from there, further nagmix. So you have your tertiary colors. So you remember? So primary colors. Our primary colors are guys <laughs> blue red yellow oh very good <laughs> Yay! so primary colors are your three basic colors that are used to mix all the use so if you're going to buy um colors or paint you could just buy red blue and yellow if you don't have any um budget for your paints you could just buy red blue yellow white and black and then from there you're going to get 
you're just going to mix everything to get your desired color. So if you're tight in a budget, you could just use red, blue, and yellow. So kasi when you have this three, that is your primary colors. And if you mix that, you, you can get your secondary colors and your tertiary colors. So again. So what are your secondary colors, guys? Hello. Orange, green, purple, purple. Oh, very good. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so secondary colors are the colors you achieve by mixing two of the primary colors together. So what makes an orange? Yes, we know na. Red and yellow pa. And purple? Blue and red. And then green? Yellow and blue. Oh, very good! Yay! Bigyan ng jacket yan. And then your tertiary colors. You have Tyron. Go ahead. <laughs> what are your tertiary colors? Red, orange, yellow, orange, green, yellow, blue, green, red, purple. Okay, and how... I'm pa pala. Purple, blue. Okay, so how did you get these colors? Winona, go. For the red, orange, we mix red and orange. For the yellow, orange, we mix yellow or and orange. Then green, yellow, green plus yellow, blue, green. Uh, ayun na, nasa name na rin naman ko ano yung nagwimik po. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, if you can see here, from the color wheel, naka-arrange what is between them, the primary and the secondary colors, yun na yung tertiary colors niya. And then, analogous color, yun yung three colors that is um that sits next to each other in the color wheel so when you say analogous color you uh these are colors that are harmony to each other so when you say analogous colors it is usually um the three uh, colors that is next to each other it could be orange red orange and red or red purple Red, purple, or purple, or blue, green, to yellow, green, yellow, or and so forth. All right. Opposite and complementary colors. So, um, who can tell me what is the difference between opposite and complementary colors, guys? Anyone? Nobody. Uh, I think I think opposite colors is actually the colors that were opposite to each other. Mm -hmm. Like for example, red and blue, orange and green. Mm -hmm. And while the complementary were actually um, colors that were that were beyond the circles. Actually, guys, that was a trick question. <laughs> Opposite and complementary colors are all uh, are are the same. So when you say opposite colors, they're also complementary colors, and they they are called opposite or complementary colors because um when you mix them together, they get you can get a very good contrast and it would with this contrast you can use this in your composition to make an emphasis with your subject all right so that is um complementary colors or opposite colors so color tips this is uh where your shading comes in so color tints, ito yung white, I mean yung hue nyo, tas talagang yung white. So 
um, from reg you get pink, for example, or what is and what else, and then yellow to white and blue to white. So that is your color dense. This is a graduation, but you could see um, what happens to the red when it is mixed with white or yellow to white and blue to white. Color shades is um, the opposite of tints. So um, with color shade, you add black. With tints, you add white. So this is um, any color na you add with black. In your color shades. So in example, you can see the graduation here. What happens to red when you add black? You get maroon or something in between and also yellow to black and blue to black. Or, and then in the middle, you have the dark blue and stuff. So that's why when you said, when I told you that if you're going to, if you don't have any budget and you want to buy uh, paints and you need to buy paints, you could just buy the five colors, red, blue, yellow, white, and black. And you could basically get all of the colors while mixing them together. So what is color intensity? Guys, do you remember what this is? So you could get this from indeed the Savini Julian. Um so color and you could you this is discussed during your visual perception class or virtual studies too, all right? So color intensity is the strength of value of color. So if you can see here, there are a lot of contrast made, but how the contrast is, was, or the emphasis was achieved depends on what color is next to it. For example, here you could see uh, a purple color inside a box, and the box uh, varies in different colors. So, so for example, um, which color um, strikes out to you more? For example, anyone? Winona. The one in the yellow background book. Yes. So, um, because of the um, contrast here, the yellow and the purple um, shade in between stands out more. While this one, the red and the purple, since it's complementary, it is a little bit subdued. The color is a little bit subdued. And with this one, it is also, since it's also a little bit complementary, it is also a little bit subdued, right? I say purple, blue, and then purple, red. So that is how you um, do your color intensity or how you use your colors. And the effect of this is also known as simultaneous contrast. That is how um, the color changes in reaction to the color that surrounds it. For example, this one, um, the color, this one looks more reddish compared to this one, right? And then this one appears to be more bluer than this one and this one as well. So again, but it is the same color. So that is what you call um, simultaneous contrast. So transparent colors, this is what we're going to um, discuss today more of, but this is just um, 
uh, a refresher. So when you say transparent colors, it is um, the colors that you can see through. And um, to do this, you have to mix the paint very thinly to make it transparent. Um, you could achieve this using um, watercolor paint. Um, no, I mean, watercolor paint is the most transparent of all mediums, while um, oil and acrylics could be um, thinner, but usually they are um, dependent, dependent, dependent on the pigment that they mixed with um, acrylics and oil are usually um, thicker in consistency. And um, you could also, to make them consistent, you need water or, um, for example, in an oil paint, you need linseed oil to make it transparent. Um, so um, what you, when you apply it, that is, um, this is what you call um, color wash or color glaze. When you apply it very thinly, the paint, when you apply it very thinly, you call it color wash or color wash in watercolor or color glaze in oil or acrylic painting. All right. Opaque colors. Opaque colors are um, the opposite of transparent. When you say opaque, you cannot see through it. So it is a solid color. For example, this one. So usually oil and acrylic are the most opaque paints. And gouache is also a little bit of opaque, opaque but it is a type of watercolor. Mm. And also, um, the thing is, not all pigments or colors are the same. Because when, when you use um, paint, um, they put different kinds of pigment to make the color like that. So usually, there are different kinds of pigment. And sometimes, the pigment is not that opaque. So that is why there is a difference in transparency or opaqueness with your uh, paint. So, warm colors, you know this already. Warm are the red to yellow, and cool colors are the green to blue. So, warm colors are like the colors of a fire, and then uh, cool colors is water and other things. Sky, um, trees, landscape. So the difference between warm colors and cool colors is that usually when you use warm colors, it would always stand out compared to the cool colors. So if you're going to um, use cool colors, it's going to give like, um, an illusion of distance. And um, this is what you call um, aerial perspective, Jung effect. Tone is the lightness or darkness of the color and is used to suggest the effect of light to create uh, a shade or the illusion of 3D form. So Tone, this is the tone. Hang on. So you also have your matte and glass color. So matte, um, very solid color, gloss color. Um, it is more reflective and this is applicable in 3D design. So we're not going to, um, we're just going to skim through it. 
And you have also your monochrome and your polychrome. Um, monochrome, um, just one color in various shades. It could either be black or white or blue, pink. So different kinds of shades or tints in one color. Polychrome uses many colors in one form. It's like this one. So art history, a quick story. So you remember this, how, what I told you about the white light going through a prism and then it would be divided into different kind of color. That was, that was um, discovered by Sir Isaac Newton. It was not invented, it was discovered around 1671 to 72. And um, what goes out from the prism is what you call the spectrum. And um, in particular history, in history also, um, the study of light and colors was um, seen through or was there or the, this period of time during the art, art history, of imp impressionism, impressionism. They, uh, the artists there or during the time were trying to capture the light and the changing effects of light. So that is where um, the, the study of light and effects became so predominant during that time. And uh, furthermore, after uh, after Impressionism, you also have um, in modern times or at the present, you use um, light as a medium now, during like like this one in um, I don't know where it me where it is, but. Um, this was exhibited by James Turrell in California. Um, it is called St. Elmo's Breath, and it is an um, installation that um, begins in a completely dark room. And then when the person goes in the room, they would um, their eyes would adjust to the light, and this is what they would see. So from this one, this is how they enter, and then from as that their, their eyes adjust, this is what they see. So um, that is how um, the artists use light as an artist medium. So a um, little more, you have the ad additive, additive, and the subtractive color. When you say additive. It is a um, mixing of colors in light. So this is where you get your primary colors, red, yellow, blue. And it becomes, if you put too much light, it would become white. Um, you can see this with screens, um, TV screens, computer screens, right? So for example, have you tried if you maximize maximize the the color light of your screens or your phone, it would like be very, very bright. If you could notice the color, especially when um you're laying down and everything's dark, you turn on your you turn your brightness color from your phone to very, very high, it would look more white than the usual. So that is what you call add additive color. Subtractive color is applicable um, with papers, um, pigments, paints, inks, traditional uh, work. So this is true when you put a paper and then you put pigment in it. So if you put paint or pigment, um, nagpatong-patong yung um, pigments. And the effect is that 
it would um in it would not reflect light instead it would absorb the light and then so yung what happens is that um and upon absorbing yung colors nag um it would be mixed together and it would form a darker color so that is why you call it subtractive color so transparency and opacity this is the lecture part so transparency and opacity is uh, Sorry, guys. So, ang kulit ng JNT. <laughs> anyway. Um, transparency to the design is simply the quality of being able to see through or partially see through one or more layers in work. Opacity, like what I discussed earlier, it is um, how the color is solid enough that you can actually see through it. So, um, this is an example wherein uh, the face is um, a little bit, or the, the hand is a little bit see-through that you could see the face through it, all right? So take note of this, guys, because this is what we're going to do. And then this is another form of transparency and opacity, or rather this is another application of transparency and opacity. This is how you use it in a poster or a form of advertisement. So in digital photography, transparency has a high functionality, like an image or an image layer. When you use Photoshop or any kind of auto editing apps or drawing apps. So you use this and, but other certain image formats are not, do not support transparency. So when you say transparency, it makes light pass through the object. And when you say opacity, it is something that is solid enough that it blocks the light passing through it. So in photography or in um, editing tools we're going to use um, in the future, um, in, in order to use transparency and opacity, the light here, for example, is passing through and it has 50% transparency. And this one, the sandwiches has 100% opacity all right so according to arne gumcher i do not believe in selling art with transparency transparencies art is a first-hand experience so this is true that in order to use in order to learn art you have to learn it by doing most of the time. So um, what we're going to do, or example of transparency and opacity, is that you're going to use layers in order to um, paint something and make it um, blend over one another. So this is an example. Um, for example, this one, um, the painter here used use the glazing technique, it's wherein um, the works are built up over time and then it creates a depth of lim luminosity to the skin. So, uh, so you have to ha have a one solid color and then you're going to paint another color, but this time with a lot of water. And then you're going to add another layer 
So, but little kind of pigment and stuff. So, yeah, transparency is also needed um, sometimes um, a very advanced skill and sometimes it's very, very helpful when you want to um, have or create a very particular um, output or style, just like this one. So um, it is transparency and opacity is not only used with posters and stuff, it is also used in ad. It could also be used as a theme, for example, just like this one. So this is a, a poster wherein um, the, the transparency of the object here, the red or the pink object, gives uh, a little bit of mystery to the um, poster on the night under the daylight. So what else? So when you put, when you do transparency, it is usually, um, it washes over the opaque. With opaque colors, light will hit the first layer and then it will bounce off. So what you're going to do, like for example here, you have this dark base, you have a magenta with white and then yellow with white and then magenta with white. What's going to happen is the dark base would not be truly dark, but rather pinkish or something like this in color. So it would look like chalky and flat. So um, so this is with white, right? And then this one, it doesn't have white. So you have the dark base, a transparent magenta, transparent yellow, and then transparent magenta over previous layer. So this is what it looks like. A dark base, transparent magenta, this the yellow would look like this, and then patungan mo pa ng another kind of magenta, it would look like this. So that is what the, uh, how your transparency or how you apply glazing or how, that's how it also works. So um, that is also what artists use when they are very, they don't want to mix directly on the palette. And that this is also what they do in order to mix something that is originally uh, on the painting or on the canvas, and then they want to change the color, they could just apply um, a different color. But if they still want to retain that kind of hue or shade, they would just apply um, a transparent layer on top of the base. So um, what happens is the dark base would still be absorbed. And then, but the thing is, it won't be droppy, but rather it would leave a dull and less vibrant final color, just like this one. So um, what happens if you apply a white base, if you have a white base? base. So this is your white base. And then you put magenta. So this is the color of magenta. And then you and furthermore, you apply a transparent yellow over the magenta. And then you also apply another transparent magenta. And it would look like this. So um, the difference between a dark base and a white base is that the dark base, it's not very reflective compared to the white. 
in white, it is opaque and very reflective. It bounces the light back to the surface from the layers of the color. So, um, what, so what happened is that even if you apply colors on top of the white, um, the transparency or the vibrancy of the color will shine through. So if you do this, you will cre uh, create more depth or emphasis to your painting compared to a dark base wherein you're going to get a dull or a, sometimes a chalky color. So um, how are you going to determine transparency and opacity of your paints? So you have to understand your paints. Sometimes what people do is that they um, make a pigment chart. And this is very helpful, especially if you don't know the, uh, the transparency or how um, consistent your pigment is. And also it is very helpful especially if you have the same color but different brand because um the you know that the the paint is very quality when when you paint it is very consistent it's very smooth and it is doesn't have like crumbles and stuff so that is how you see or not very shocky that is how you get or you know that the paint or the pigment is of quality. So if you can see here, um, you can see here this deep magenta is very, um, it's a little bit opaque and there it's not very smooth compared to this one, uh, viral red green. So it's very smooth and the pigment is of quality compared to, for example, this one, a Lizardin Crescent Hue. And you could also see here the Cod Moon Red. Cod Moon Red is very transparent compared to the Pyrrole Red or the Deep Magenta or the Permanent Alzarian Crimson Red. And you could also do the same here with the blues. So, and so this is how you're going to use a transparency chart or use a transparency chart. Transparency and opacity chart. This is another way. So you have to measure one inch or one and a half inch in rows. And then on top of it, you're going to paint a black paint, but the black paint should not, it could also be a permanent marker. It should not be, um, it should be waterproof and it should not smudge when you paint over it. So, and then you're go what you're just going to do is the paint on top of it, the color. So which, colors are opaque which colors are transparent anyone guys are you still there Orange, yellow or purple okay paul can you what is opaque is, and which colors are transparent um sa oil po yung lime and yung cerulean, brilliant purple, tapos sa acrylic, yung primary, primary yellow, and yellow ochre. And then, itong green, ano nakalagay dito ma'am? Hindi ka mabasa yung green sa baba ng yellow ochre. Cinnabar green. And then, cerulean, and cadmium orange. Yun yung mga opaque. Okay, very good. So um, you could see here which ones are opaque and which ones are trans 
translucent or transparent. So the technique is that if the paint, um, if you could see the black paint at the bottom, that means the paint pigment is transparent. If you couldn't see it, for example, the cerulean, then that means the paint is opaque. So that's it. And another thing, um, there is also, you could also see how transparent or how opaque your paint is by um, looking at your um, tubes. But the thing is, um, it's very hard to um, guess what is this or how transparent it is according to um, the chart. So it's much better to actually test it out like this one. So whenever you're painting, um, you don't have to second guess if it is transparent or very opaque. And this is an example of from Windsor and Newton. So this is a watercolor. You can see how if it's light fastness here and the opacity here. And how if it's permanent or not, or if it would be uh, easy washed out and stuff. So I am. Another example is this one. So this is how she, she, she I think she rated um, the, her reds and yellows. And this is also very helpful, especially if you don't, you, you don't want to parang second guess what kind of red this tube is or what kind of yellow this is, then on second guessing it directly on canvas. If you do this, less mistakes and, and it would be faster and easier to actually paint. And if you could see here, even you could see how consistent your uh, paint is or how it is not consistent. So, um, or how smooth or rough your paints are. So, um, it's also helpful when you mix. For example, if you want uh, a light green, for example, you want to use a very opaque or somehow opaque yellow and um, medium opaque or um, a little transparent blue to make a light green yellow. Because you, sometimes you cannot um, control your hand on how much paint will get out of the tube. So that's also one way to use your um, opaque and transparency or chart. So these are your references. And this is also, this PowerPoint is also available in your Google Classroom. So to, we have four minutes left to have any questions, comments, suggestions. Guys? Okay. So, so in, what's the next? On September 1, you're going to have an exercise. We're just going to meet um, in the morning at 8.30. And then I'm going to give you the exercise.
All right. So I'm just going to discuss a little bit on how you're going to uh, use um, how to glaze or how to um, control water or transparency using your acrylic paint. So by then, I hope you prepared your canvas, um, your acrylics, your painting, and your design. So what kind of design uh, do I want for the exercise? I want you to make a portrait with um, little transparent things. So, um, objects on the face so it could be like a tattoo or something so i want to see or words objects like flowers just like what i uh i told you i what i showed you on the presentation earlier so okay prepare your um design and also prepare your canvas it should be fine why do we need to why do the canvas be prime. That is um, for uh, the cloth to um, uh, parang di absorb the cloth yung um, paint. And hindi siya mag go through. Kasi sometimes may butas yung canvas or yung cloth. So we need to prime the canvas. All right. Any more questions? You need it on September 1, okay? Guys, can you show yourselves? So, no more questions. Everything is clear. Yes, ma'am. Right. So um, prepare your design on 8.30, we're going to meet. I'm just going to lecture you a bit. Um, so everything is clear regarding the design. It should be a portrait and it should have transparent thing on the face. It could be your face, it could be whoever's face. Uh, you're also degraded according to rubrics. So the rubrics usually are um, originality or creativity, cohesion, clarity, and execution. Okay, so you have four rubrics and you're going to, okay. All right, um, sorry, I forgot. Um, you can email me regarding your um, Questions, suggestions, or reactions, or if you have any problems that is school related, you can email me here. It's on the chat box. It's lbkawaling at kalayaan.edu.ph. All right. Okay. No more questions. Be prepared on September 1. All right. Canvas, paint. Really. All right. Class dismissed. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, mom. Bye-bye.